Well, I was researching another book, um, a prose collection on motherhood, and um, I happened to be leafing through a very old uh, magazine, motherhood parenting magazine. Uh, and being a parent, having been a parenting journalist, I was absolutely stunned by the advice that I saw there. It was a piece to mothers, basically, from um, their resident agony aunt, saying that it was absolutely unacceptable to lift up a child before it was one years old because it overexcited their brain. And this was so utterly contrary to obviously every piece of advice that we now know, whereby you, you know you hug your baby, you you pick them up, you stimulate them, all the rest of it. I was just stunned. I walked away stunned that mothers were actually told this kind of advice. And I kind of thought, my gosh, you know, if you look over the eras, what else were people told? You know, people who put so much trust and faith into these into these agony aunts were told that it was com it was completely wrong. Well, basically, it was a lot of, uh, you know, going back to magazines and newspapers that were very, I mean, I mean, I was really originally a journalist, but, you know, magazines that were long forgotten, titles I'd never even heard of, um, you know, Petticoat, Forget-Me-Not, you know, po uh, Polly's Paper, all these kind of things, and just sort of reading them sort of, you know, from cover to cover to cover over the decades, really. And then every time I came across something that was really like, oh, my God, you know, I, I would basically add that to the collection, really. What amazed me was that the hum human nature has become, has been the same for centuries basically. People still want the same thing. They want love, companionship, they want to look good and all the rest of it. What surprised me was how much um, society's attitudes and society's rules and the regulations that governed people had changed and, and how over various decades it had been, women had been very, very restricted and, and very limited in, in, in what they could do to express themselves creatively or sort of in relationships. So that, that really surprised me, definitely. Well, I think we live in a very complicated world, um, and I think everyone's a bit, bit uh, unclear about what they should be doing and how they should be doing it. So uh, I think this book uh, talks back to a much simpler time where everybody knew what, knew what the rules were, and they knew they had to stick to them. Yeah, I mean, you'd get letters from sort of women in 1920 saying they were just absolutely fed up of their husbands or boyfriends <laughs> going to watch football. It's exactly the same as now, you know, or women talking about, you know, they were very bored in their marriages. But, you know, whereas now, you know, that problem would be so, uh, would be sort of tackled completely differently. Back then, women were told to like it, or lump, like it or lump it. You know, a lot of it is sort of very un-PC, which I suppose, you know, now we're a few years away from it is quite funny. I suppose probably at the time it wasn't quite so funny, but to see how far society has come, you know, is, is just, a, 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 just amazing. But also, you know, the book is very humorous and it's just, you know, um, it just really shows, it, and a lot of the, uh, the agony advice is very high-handed, it's quite rude, it's very brisk, you know, so I mean, it, it is hilarious. And there's a wonderful use of language uh, through it, you know, which is another, another part of it I really enjoyed, you know, researching.